Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. I want to do a lecture, it's lecture number 32 for the first year students of the Home Bible College. And I want to begin in these lectures discussing the question of um, the evangelist and evangelistic work and evangelism, whichever way, whichever way you want to talk about it. Up until uh, lecture 31, we've dealt with the Christian. Who is a Christian and what is it that a Christian does and how does a Christian live? But now we're going to talk about evangelism from now until the end of the year. Um, these lectures go all the way to lecture number 44, but this is number 32. And the particular proposition today is that the evangelist is separated unto the gospel. Now, in previous um, lectures, we talked about how that the evangel how that the Christian is separate from the world, and how he is separate um, from evil in the world. But now we see that the evangelist is separated not just from something, but he's separated unto something. The priests of old would have a turban on their head, and on written across the front of the turban was the phrase "separated." unto the Lord or holiness unto the Lord and that's what an evangelist is. An evangelist is someone that has been set apart for service, for evangelistic service. So the evangelist then is in a special way separated unto the preaching of the gospel. Now in, we see all this in Acts chapter 13. I'll read it for you. Verse 1 it says, Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them off. Um, then Barnabas and Saul sent forth by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. Uh, they, then they arrived at Salamis and proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues and John was with them as their helper. So let's just go through the various stages of what happened and we can itemise the actual things, the events, the specific things that were happening. The first thing is that the Spirit of God was going to do a new thing. It was going to do something new. Now the church was aware of this and because of that they were praying and fasting that the Holy Spirit would give to them a word, a message, a revelation to enable them to understand what the Spirit wanted to do next. I mean, those days, of course, they had prophets. There was no New Testament and they had to have prophets of the Lord, which would be able to stand up and speak in the name of the Lord um, in the absence of all scripture to enable them to determine God's will. Uh, nowadays, of course, we don't have prophets in quite the same way, but we do nevertheless still seek to do God's will. And the Spirit spoke to the church, presumably through one of the prophets, saying, set, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So Barnabas and Saul then were being called by the Lord um, to do the work of evangelism. And in fact, it would include uh, it would include church planting and a number of other features. But the main thing is that they were being called to be separate, um, separated unto the work. Now, it says the church prayed and fasted. Now, they continued to pray and fast. Presumably, they continued to pray and fast to seek for further confirmation or maybe for further guidance. Or maybe it was because the whole of the church needed to come to a unanimity on the issue. They needed to come into full union. So they prayed and fasted until all the church were in agreement. And then it says that they laid hands on them. Now this was the old 
uh, Jewish idea of ordaining a person. We don't have to necessarily put hands upon the head of a person anymore. But in those days, that was their custom. And so they put hands upon them. And that had the effect of saying, we are associating ourselves with you in a specific way to enter into this ministry. And they went out under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and uh, they went proclaiming the word of God in the Jewish synagogues and John was their helper. Now, this was straightforward missionary or evangelistic work. There are many sorts of other types of work in Christian ministry. There is a multiplicity of para-missionary work. Somebody has to write the literature, somebody has to man the radio station, somebody has to build the school or the hospital, somebody has to build churches. So there were lots of other aspects of ministry and we see John there. He also was with them, John Mark, he was the writer of the Gospel of Mark and he was with them and he was a younger man of course and he was a helper to the evangelistic team. So who then were ordained for this task? Well, all of them. Barnabas and Saul and John were all ordained by the Holy Spirit for the work that God had called them to do. They didn't know where God would eventually leave them, lead them completely, but they had the sure guidance of the Holy Spirit. They were self-supporting as much as they were able and were also supported by the free will offerings of the Lord's people. And so this is very exciting time. This is the very first few um, very first few sentences which describe by Luke the beginning of Paul's missionary journeys as we call them. Um, but the important thing is, and we come back to the central point, is that the evangelist and this is real true evangelism this is missionary work the evangelist is separated from ordinary life that he might be devoted to the preaching of the gospel he's separated unto the gospel well there we are that's the beginning of our um, of our lectures on evangelism so we look forward to catching up with you next week god willing and have a great day, all of you. Bye for now.